The hypersonic race is really heating up. Russia just released footage of its Zircon hypersonic anti-ship missile launching from a frigate. China has been showing off its hypersonic missiles in parades. And the US just released some more details on its ARRW hypersonic missile, specifically that it can hit targets a thousand miles away in just 12 minutes. For comparison, the Tomahawk cruise missile would take nearly two hours to travel that distance. These weapons are giving these nations a massive new capability, the ability to hit time-sensitive targets in a matter of minutes, giving virtually no time to hide or defend itself. Russia, China, the US, and many other nations see the value, both the operational and propaganda value, and are all quick to show the latest off. But before that, our sponsor, World of Tanks. World of Tanks is a massive multiplayer online PC game where you can battle it out with one of over 550 different tanks across incredible maps. The maps are really cool. Deserts, forests, fields, even cities like Paris. It's a lot of fun and really requires an element of strategy, more than I had originally thought. Light tanks, medium, or heavy all have their pros and cons balancing the game out. They even have an impressive system that determines damage by where your rounds hit. Some will penetrate, some will just ricochet off and do nothing. Some have heavy armor, but have weak spots. And they have all the most famous tanks from several nations from throughout the early 20th century. And it's all free to play and free to win. Not one of those pay to win games. You can really have a lot of fun with this game without spending a single dime. So give it a try, go down and click the link in the description. New players will get seven premium days, 500 gold, and a premium tank, the Soviet T-127, using invite code TANKTASTIC. So give it a try, you won't be disappointed. Again, that's World of Tanks. Hypersonic weapons are all the craze, from Russia making big announcements and showing off their latest ideas, to Trump bragging about what he calls a super duper missile. The speed just gives its operator an incredible advantage that can't be overstated. With the speed of war today, you need weapons that will keep up. So first, what exactly are hypersonic weapons? Hypersonic is defined as anything over five times the speed of sound, which is roughly 4,000 miles per hour, or just over 6,000 kilometers per hour. If you just go by that measure, the world has had hypersonic weapons for a long time. Nearly all ballistic missiles at some point in their flight move faster than that. One of the first and most popular missiles, the German V-2, flew just shy of Mach 5. But the famous Scud missile and every ballistic missile with a longer range flies at hypersonic speed. However, we normally don't count those. What most people refer to as hypersonic missiles are those that have some sort of ability to maneuver in flight. There are really two different types of hypersonic missiles, cruise and boost glide. Hypersonic cruise missiles have their engines running the whole time to sustain their speed. They are air breathing, just like any other jet air vehicle. Because of this, they normally travel slower, right around Mach 5, maybe up to Mach 8. Boost Glide hypersonic missiles only have their engine run for a short period of time to get them up to speed. Then the rest of the time, the weapon is just coasting. These are extremely fast, up to Mach 20. But since they are not continually being propelled by an engine, they begin to slow down significantly as they maneuver and re-enter the atmosphere. I made a video on hypersonic weapons, so I'm not gonna repeat everything I already said there. You can check it out here by clicking in the top right. It covers the basics, what they are, how they work, and how they can be defended against. Check that out if you're interested. China is a bit more secretive, so it's hard to get into them, but both the US and Russia have several different hypersonic weapons programs in development and testing. The US Air Force, Navy, and Army each have their own program. The Air Force with the AGM-183 ARRW launched from an aircraft, the Navy with their CPS, or Conventional Prompt Strike, which will be launched from Virginia-class submarines, and the Army has the LRHW, which stands for Long Range Hypersonic Weapon. Not too much is known about that, but it's likely to be a ground-launched weapon similar to what Pershing was. On top of these three, three more are in development by DARPA. TPG, or Tactical Boost Glide, Opfires, and Hawk, for hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept. On a side note, I hope they start to give these some real names. These acronyms are just torture. But the US is pouring a lot of money into these, with $3.2 billion budgeted for 2021. The US has been slowly messing around with hypersonic weapons for nearly two decades now, but never really put much money into it. Now that China and Russia are releasing their own weapons, the US has really kicked into gear. And speaking of Russia, they have several as well. That we know of, there is a Vanguard, which is launched from an ICBM, which boosted up the speed. These boost glide vehicles have incredible ranges, possibly nearly matching that of the ICBMs themselves. The next is Kinzel, an air launch weapon. This seems to be smaller than the US ARRW, and can be carried by much smaller fighter jets. 
compared to the ARRW being, for now at least, only carried by large bombers, which could really limit its numbers and options for deployment. And finally, Zircon, one that's been in development and talked about for a long time. This one is launched from surface ships and able to hit other surface ships. Anti-ship weapons is something the Soviet Union and later on Russia have a long history with, as they needed a way to counter the large number of US aircraft carriers. However, there's been some weird stuff going on with some of these. Russia's video released of its Zircon test is somewhat questionable. Tom Nudik over at the War Zone discussed how it appears that there is some evidence of splicing together clips. Russia also does not show any footage of it hitting a target, just saying that it successfully hit a target 450 kilometers away in the Barents Sea. And honestly, it wouldn't be the first time that Russia has spliced together different footage of its hypersonic weapons. Their footage released of Kinzel a few years back also had this, quickly switching to a 3D rendering. And again later in that same video showing the impact, if you watch slower, you can see it's of two completely different clips put together. This isn't to say that the missile is fake or doesn't do what they say it does, but I think it does raise some questions on why they keep doing this. But to be fair, we haven't seen much from the US either, or China in terms of official footage. We have some old tests such as the X-51 Wave Rider, which was launched a few times from a B-52 a decade ago, along with the X-43 even further back in 2004 but no full test really of any of its newer weapons. Regardless, it's fair to say that we are well on our way to seeing not one, not two, but many hypersonic weapons enter into operational service throughout the world in the next few years. And it's gonna change a lot. Their fast speed and unpredictable flight path puts anything within range at risk. Not only is it gonna get there fast, but you might not even know that you are the target due to its ability to maneuver. So it's gonna be an eventful 2020s seeing how these weapons change things.